Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And we're back working on the Pogo. Convair's infamous vertical takeoff and landing uh, fighter. Though never received any armament. And I'm holding this awkwardly because it doesn't really fit onto the screen this way. So, where are we? This is where we are. We've got the cockpit together, we have the office put together, the, uh, the cockpit, and if you watched last episode, you'll saw how I basically furnished that, and if you haven't seen it, there will be a link somewhere around here. So, there's not a lot of assembly left. Um, pretty much we have put the wings on. Uh, there's, there's four little landing legs that I've got to go on, um, a little bit of work around the cockpit, and then we've got to install the propeller. And one thing that did not make it into last episode, although I did film it, and I don't know what happened to it, is if we look at one of our, uh, propeller blades here, you can see there's this little white bit there. Focus. And that was a chunk that was missing. It had been either a short shot or it had been broken or something like that. So you can see how I had to put a little piece of styrene in there. And then I had to uh, put some filler on there and sand it. Now, the propellers on this are uh, one of my least favorite parts. Then it isn't Lindbergh's fault. But uh, I always tend to get a little annoyed at these really sharp edged, uh, squared off. Um, propeller blades. They just don't look very elegant. Um, so anyway, here's our um, our propeller contra-rotating, and it has this giant spinner on it. Um, eventually, it was thought that they would fit a radar in here, so this part wouldn't spin. But on the prototype, I think it was just free to spin. They hadn't figured out that part of the equation yet so it does get quite a bit less stubby when you when you put this assembly on the front so that's where we are with this a lot of final assembly to do and then of course painting and decaling i think before i move on to the wings i'm just going to address this seam along here it's not horrible, it's not the worst I've ever dealt with, but it still needs to be addressed, particularly here. There, sh there, you know, there shouldn't be this longitudinal little line here, so we'll try to clean that up. So we're doing a little bit of work here off camera on our pogo, and you can see there is filler right here, and a little bit of filler was used under here. Um, and a tiny bit back here, but really there hasn't been a lot of filler. This has required the most space, and it's supposed to be a flat shape here. It's on camera properly. And then there's, um, was molded in a series of ridges. One patch here, a smaller patch there. Trying to preserve those while trying to get this nice and flat proved to be a little impossible. So I do have some parts I've created that I'm going to be gluing back on here after this gets fully sanded. So I'm continuing to get this ready for paint. You can see where I've put those, you know, corrugations here on the nose panel to replace the ones that got lost while I was smoothing things out. I want to call your attention to, you should just be able to see it here, this white line running along there and you can see it here on the other side and that was a very very small um, line in the in the seam where the wing came together now I know I said it, it was an excellent fit and it is really quite good but if we look at the underside here you can see there's just a little bit of a line there as well and sometimes instead of having to just put like this big blob of putty in there and sand it off what you can do is put some white glue or carpenter's glue in there and you just blob it in there and then you wet your finger and you just wipe 90% of it away 
and it's a it's a quick and easy way of filling up a a seam, especially an inside seam like this, that otherwise would be hard to deal with. And I think we're ready for paint. We better be because we've got it in the paint booth here. I've just got it pretty much hanging from this giant hole in the nose right there. But, uh, I'm mostly happy with how it looks. So let's get painting. So it's nice and shiny. I like that turned out pretty good. And of course, there's not a whole lot more painting to go on here. Just the upper and lower fins here require some black. And there's a anti-dazzle piece here on the nose. It ends up getting painted black as well. And of course, the propellers. They're going to be painted black as well. You can see I've already painted the tips yellow. They'll be masked off. Okay, a lot of on and off. Mostly off. But I've got our propeller bits painted here. I've airbrushed them flat black. And as you can see, there's big tabs of um, masking tape on the ends here. Now, I don't know why, but this is one of these little jobs I absolutely hate doing, is masking off the, the yellow tips of uh, propeller blades or multicolor tips. So, now, um, uh, the reason I haven't been working on this quite as diligently is I'm actually working on this year's Father's Day project. Um, hopefully that's going to be a two-parter, and I'll basically... It's probably release part one the day before Father's Day, part two the next day. Um, but anyway, I have been working on that. So let's get this masking tape off and see how this turned out. Well, not too bad. And that's not too bad. And that looks all right. Ah, uh, there's a little bit of contamination. That's why I hate doing this. That's all right. That one's all right. That one's all right. And the back side, oh, a little bit on this one too. See, that's why I hate doing this. Doesn't matter how diligently you do it, you end up with a couple little spots. I've glued the last little washer on here to hold all this together. And you can see that, yes, indeed, those little gears really do work. As you turn one, holding on to the propeller boss at the back, the other one turns in the other direction. It's actually quite nifty. I'm sure it will stop working before I actually finish assembling the whole darn thing, but for the moment, it's quite neat. I've given the silver a coat of uh, Tamiya gloss coat in order to seal it in. We're ready for decals, and we can take our canopy off. Um, it was only held on there with mask all, supposedly. There we go. There, it's all safe. This is the ground support ladder, or part of it. It still requires to have uh, another set of supports going right across here but I really don't like it um, number one um, I mean I know I know the whole thing was probably you know reasonably spindly anyway but this just looks comical it should theoretically have a set of wheels on the bottom, and I can't imagine some ground crew dragging this out of the plane. <laughs> so, I'm going to put more bracing on the bottom. Uh, perhaps I might put a railing on the side here. Um, I'm just going to beef it up and make it just quite a bit better, because it just... <laughs> 
looks very sad as it is. So I put a lot more work into this than I intended. Um, as you can see, I've got some diagonal bracing in here. And on the back side, I've got some um, more bracing as well. Um, I've got some fairly beefy wheels here. They actually came from um, some of the ground support equipment for um, my Sabre Dog. Um, and this little lever here, that would be to apply the brakes to these large wheels on the front. Hopefully we can see it. Oh, now I tried to focus in on it. It won't focus. You can see I've got some cast ring wheels here. Um, I've installed a flat piece of tread onto the ladder because, I mean, the pilot and ground crew that are climbing up this thing have got enough problems without trying to climb a ladder with round rungs. I know you can climb a ladder with round rungs, but flat ones are better. I really didn't mess with the top much, but at least this one looks like it's man enough to do the job now or lady enough to tell them how to do it. So I'm gonna be giving this a coat of red paint and uh, get on with the rest of the project. There we go, our life guide tower is complete. Sorry, boarding ladder. It's done and it looks better than it did. So the decaling and final assembly was done off camera as usual I just find when I'm doing the final assembly there's just so many things I'm trying to accomplish um, number one would be monotonous to watch but the other thing is is um, it's difficult to keep track of what I have done and what I haven't done so here we go it is all finished now uh, sharp-eyed viewers may be saying hey those tip tanks, if that's what they are, aren't black. And I believe they are on the box front. Um, that's the thing with prototype aircraft is a lot of times they, they, they get modified and they get repainted in different ways. I was going by the paint scheme that was in the book I showed in the first episode. And that only had the tips of the upper and lower tails and it also had a slightly different pattern here for the anti-glare patch so this was an enjoyable little model build well i mean it's bigger than you think it's actually quite large you can see compared to my hand as i knock it over um it's not the longest plane, doesn't have the, the greatest wingspan, but it, it it's big, fairly big. Uh, I did enjoy um, basically scratch building the cockpit, and I think I came probably 80% accurate to the real thing. Certainly good enough based on the limited information that I had. Um, and let's get the boarding ladder in here. As I said earlier in the video, um, I'm sure they may have had a compact ladder like this. However, uh, there was a much larger kind of a staircase that rolled in place. It actually straddled the upper tail. So there was basically a platform here and the pilot would go up the staircase and it was a large platform that he could use to, to get into the aircraft. But Having said that, at least way I feel that uh, my modifications to the ladder certainly make it a lot more plausible. I mean, it certainly should have a set of wheels on it. And of course, those large wheels would have a brake that they could engage. Um, decals. The wasn't much of a decal guide in the instructions. I mean, the big ones were obvious, but a lot of the... A lot of the stenciling, not so much. Um, these two little slots here, I'm pretty sure that's where the ground handling equipment would grab onto it. Um, 
basically there was a large wheeled trailer that kind of grabbed onto it and pivoted it to the horizontal position. And then just wheeled it away in a horizontal position. And if we look at the flaps here, or the ailerons, flapperons, anyway, you can see it says no step. And I mean, at first that seems kind of stupid. How are you ever going to step on that? Well, a lot of times when they were servicing it, it would be in a horizontal position. And no, you wouldn't want to step on those areas. And in case you missed it, um, as it, the kit comes, there's nothing in this space. Um, I added those two exhaust pipes. Um, and I think it looks much better for it. Uh, they didn't say whether the danger exhaust blast should be horizontal or vertical. Well, I'm thinking probably when it was taking off is when that would be the, the greatest the greatest danger. So I put it that away. And if you're wondering how the propellers ended up turning out, as you can see, if I turn one, the other one turns in the opposite direction. So that actually ended up working out pretty good. Um, props to Lindbergh for engineering that as well as they did. So I know it took a little bit longer to drag this one across the finishing line. That's that's the case with all my videos. But anyway, this probably would have been done about two weeks earlier. But um, I've been working on another project, not the CP Express truck, but rather this year's Father's Day tribute, uh, which I think I've got maybe about a third of the work done. Um, Hopefully that will be two videos that will come out uh, the day before and Father's Day respectively. Something like that. Um, and you have, if you haven't watched any of the previous Father's Day projects, uh, right around here there should be a link to a playlist of the past ones. Um, hopefully, hopefully this one gets completed and everyone enjoys it. But... Thanks for watching, and until next time, just keep on modeling.